How do you keep your tools safe? I've been using the Schlage door lock for about six years, but I'm ready for a change. Today, I'm going to be reviewing this LMA push button lock that doesn't use batteries or electricity of any kind. I bought this battery powered lock about six years ago. I liked it because it wasn't an automatic lock that would inevitably eat batteries. There are deadbolt locks that will pull the deadbolt in and out with a small motor. But the only time the battery is ever used for this is when you put the four digit password in or hit the lock button. Here's my old door lock, but before I get started, I am not an expert with door locks. I've installed plenty of door locks in my life. So you're gonna hear me say a lot of this here and that part there and this here because I honestly, I'm not an expert with these things. The way this works is once you put your code in, this little plastic piece here pushes this little shaft forward. When it pushes forward, you can see this little shaft here and this catches onto this part of the door. Again, I don't know the name of it. And it allows it to unlock and lock the door. When I installed it, I wanted the deadbolt to be tight against the frame to keep the sawdust in my garage. I am very stingy about my sawdust. Doing that damaged this inner connection and the lock will spin several times before it locks or unlocks the door. Each time I have to put the passcode in or hit the lock button. And usually the optimal time for it to fail is when I either have my hands full or it's pouring down rain. The way that I fixed this a couple years ago was I added a, a small washer that I kind of made. I took out this piece here and I slid this washer inside of here and then put this back in. And what this did was it lifted this little shaft here so that it would go a little bit higher and not hit those chewed out marks right there. But it's getting so bad now that I'm gonna to have to replace this ring altogether or buy a new lock. Honestly, I was pretty happy buying another one of these as they aren't terrible with the batteries but I knew I was going to face the same problem with this weak connector. LMA smart lock just happened to get between me and the pay now button on Amazon. And they asked me to try it out. I couldn't resist. All right, so I got it and took it out of the box. I took the backing off and expected to find some battery cover that Schlade's lock had. The only screw that this thing had is what holds this faceplate on the front. When LMA contacted me, I wasn't told that this was completely mechanical. So it was a big surprise when I realized there weren't any batteries. This is not the first channel to review this lock, so I'm not gonna pretend like I just discovered something that nobody has ever seen before. But I have a natural fascination for mechanical things, and when I found out this lock didn't have any batteries, I really wanted to find out why and how it works. So altogether, there's really three main parts to this. You've got the front of the door lock, you've got the back door that unlocks it and locks it, and you've got the actual bolt. Now the way that this works is there's a little tab right here and it's always gonna face the inside of the door. So it'll either go this way or it'll go this way. But that tab prevents it from going the opposite direction. If we look at my old door lock, you can see it's a much more complicated mess. It's very similar, but it is a mess. I think that this is much more difficult to figure out and put together than, than this. But we're gonna go ahead and concentrate right now on this front faceplate. You can see there's a keypad on the front. I'll take the front faceplate off and something that I've seen in other videos is that people were able to pry these open and it looks like they fixed that. It's much deeper than the, the old ones. The way that this works is that there are several different things called tumblers inside of the body here. Now. They're all pressed in right now, but when I reset it, they all pop back out. They give you a little pair of, of tweezers, and basically the way this works is all your numbers that you want as your password are gonna be the gold ones, and the silver are going to be just blank. So I'm gonna take all these out. They do give you extras in case you want to do more than six combinations or less than six combinations. I think four is the, the minimum, and then you've got eight is the maximum. If we look at the gold and silver pieces, you can see that the gap is what really makes the difference between the two. If I hold them side by side, you can see that there's a gap right there and there's a gap right there. Now, when we turn the dial, you can see that there's all these little pins that slide forward. It looks like there's some gold ones and some silver ones, but it's just the oil on them. So I've got a bunch of silver ones lined up here. And if one of the pins slides through, it doesn't have any problems and it's going to unlock the door. But if you have a gold one in there that's not depressed, then basically it cannot slide into that slot. Now, when we push the, the gold one down, which is again, the one that we've assigned, it becomes in that, that plane there and allows the door to be unlocked. I think that's a very clever way to do this. 
Now that got me thinking, what if I just want to put one of these in? So I'll put this in and I'll turn it to the left to reset it. Now it's raised up and we'll see if just one of those will keep the door locked. Now without any other tumblers, that one will keep it locked. Now you're gonna to wanna to have all the other ones obviously because you're gonna be able to probably feel that there's none in the other ones. But I thought that that was interesting. So at this point we put all the gold ones where we want to put our codes. And then the silver ones will fill in all the empty spots. Okay, so they're all in. I'll go ahead and reset them. It's locked. I'll hit my gold tumblers and we're unlocked. Now it is important to note that it really doesn't matter which combination you do. You can do one, four, B and nine, or you could do nine, three, B, one. Obviously you also can't do two of the same numbers because you've already depressed it. But I'm gonna go ahead and install my door and we'll see how that, that goes. I have seen some people complain about having to drill into this, but it doesn't look like I've got any problems. It looks like I clear it pretty well. Then you've got this gold plate that fits over. So it's locked, can't be unlocked. And there we go. Now, one thing I've already noticed with this lock is that it is much more robust. When I lock it, it just has a lot more strength to it than the other one did. So I don't see this thing wearing out anytime soon. Personally, I think this is a really cool lock. If you're looking for a way to slow down a thief, this is a great choice. I've had problems with batteries eventually not working. We all have. It's nice knowing I can close things down at the end of the night with the turn of the lock and not have to worry about whether or not the battery and the lock button will work the next day. If you are interested in this, I have a 20% code you can find in the description. Big thanks to my patrons for giving me a reason to lock my garage. If you'd like to be a part of our group, I have a link in the description. Thank you. Michelle B, Keith Current, William L. McNally, Jerry Adams, Tommy QR, Zach Finch, Rich Lightfoot, and Tudor the Barbarian. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and ring that bell. And I thank you so much for being a part of my shop. Please leave a comment below. Come find me on Instagram at Make Things with Rob. And remember to keep making things.